Hello and welcome to this week's preview show where Neil Perrett is alongside me to discuss all things AFC Bournemouth in the next 15 minutes or so. Here's what's coming up. We'll look back at last weekend and that defeat to Watford. We'll also be joined by under-18s manager Alan Connell who looks back at their FA Youth Cup win. And finally, we will look ahead to the weekend's game against Norwich at Carrow Road. Well, we're going to start back at last weekend and that defeat to Watford. Neil, it was a, a very difficult afternoon, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a difficult afternoon. Um, everybody knew the significance of the game. You know, it was a six-pointer for, bo- for both teams, um, both needing the points down there as we are. Um, the crowd were really up for the game. It was a really buoyant atmosphere pre-match. Uh, the club had done everything they could to make sure that that was the case. It was almost like a carnival atmosphere sort of leading up to the game. Lots at stake, so there's going there's, you know, to be some nerves um, in the game as well. Um, everything everything was going okay for the first you know first sort of 15 to 20 minutes, and then uh, then Watford scored, and um, you know there weren't too many positives after that. And I mean, probably one of the only positives of the afternoon: Adam Smith, Nathan Ake back in the starting eleven, and that will be a big boost for confidence. You know, with the games coming up. Absolutely, two two players. Two first choice players who've been, um, you know, missed over the last month or so when they've been out. Um, important to get them as ready, um, as ready as they can be, as ready and prepared. And obviously, they are now ready. You know, they're back in, straight back into the first team. Two really key players going to be absolutely crucial over the uh, final 16 games of the season for definite. And obviously, last weekend it was a three nil scoreline. Was a three nil scoreline harsh? Obviously, in the second half, Bournemouth pressing forward, trying to get that goal to get themselves back into the game, and then you know Watford hit a third on the counter attack. Yeah, I mean, um, it's one of those situations where if you're going to lose one nil, you know, you can you, you, if you lose three nil. I know it's a couple of, couple of goals on the goal difference, but you know the first goal was a, was a blow, particularly in the circumstances that it came about in. Um, you know, it was partly sort of self-inflicted, if you like, by um, you know con- conceding the way that we did. Uh, thereafter, you know, the, everything's still to play for. You're you're only one goal behind, but of course, the longer the game goes on and you're losing one nil, then obviously you have to press. Um, you know, take some risks, take some chances. Um, Watford capitalised on that and got their second. And y- yeah, you can't really count the third goal when it coming so deep into the game. The game was done and dusted by then. So perhaps. 3-0 was probably a little bit flattering, but you know maybe 2-0 would have probably been a more accurate reflection. Well, it certainly was a tough afternoon, but in the week, our under-18s made it through in the FA Youth Cup. Let's take a look at how they did it. Genza, good touch from him. But a loose pass as well. And Genza, top scorer for the under-16 side last season, as James Oliver does very well to evade two challenges there. Still Oliver, plenty of room for him. Good chance this, Oliver, it's low, Williams, it's there! Kavan Williams with the goal. Great work by James Oliver on the left-hand side. And it's AFC Bournemouth one, Cardiff City nil. Well, a fantastic win there and a fantastic goal to win it. Alan, thank you very much for joining us. We all saw the progress on Tuesday night. You must have been absolutely delighted. Yeah, I was pleased. Um, Tough game against Cardiff, like we said before. Category 2 Academy, well established, got good players. uh, But I thought our boys performed quite well on the night. Again, not quite the heights that I think we're capable of. um, But some good stuff on the ball, especially first half. Um, and then second half was more about our defensive resolve and, and being difficult to beat, especially when we went down to 10 men late on. Uh, so for, from, a, from an overall experience for the players in the real tough conditions that it was Tuesday night, I uh, couldn't, couldn't be more pleased. Um, but I'm also excited knowing that, that there's, more, there's more in them um, and hopefully we can uh, keep working and, and, and um, in the coming weeks more, more of that good stuff comes out and they can show their, their full potential. And the conditions out there, we all saw it, sweeping wind and, and the rain coming down. It must be, must have been horrible for your boys to play in. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Um, as a former player myself, I've obviously played in conditions like that and it's not easy uh, with the driving wind and rain. But I thought the boys cope with it quite well. Um, it's hard to predict and prepare for things like that. But ultimately, 
you know if they want to have the the, the careers that they want um they're going to experience conditions like that and and sometimes they'll experience same conditions on on a, on a lot worse pitches than, than than out of the vitality so um again a good experience for them um didn't make it probably a game for the purists for obvious reasons um but again i want the players to have the best experiences possible and the most varied experiences so again choosing that that they got that in and um like i said on, on the night i felt that they uh, were really mature in the way they handled everything on the night Alan, the, um, the Youth Cup win on Tuesday came on the back of winning the league, but that, that's not the end of your league campaign. Just explain what happens now. OK, yes, yeah, so we've got two league fixtures to, to fulfil, um, to finish that part of the league. Um, and then the the top six South West teams and the top six South East teams come together for like uh, what, what's called the Merit League. So in theory, it's the best 12 teams in the South um, in, in, in Category 3 academies. So we play at the league where we've just played each other once. So 11 league games left there. Um, so, yeah, pleased to, to obviously win the league. Um, boys have worked very, very hard, uh, no doubt about that. And I, I've been pleased with how we've, we've progressed um, and most importantly how they've in, progressed as individuals. Um, to win any league is, is, is a nice achievement. Um, but like I said, I hope my aim is to end the season for players to be ready to, to step up. Um, but yeah, it's nice to win the league and, and credit to the boys for doing that. They, 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 they deserve that nice moment um, together and, and also to look back on in years to come. And it's the fifth round of the FA Youth Cup for the second season in succession. Millwall at home, um, early February, I think the game's going to be played. What, what, what can you tell us about Millwall? Do you know much about them? Um, we know they're top of their league in, in, in the, the league Cardiff or in the Category 2 league, uh, Premier League 2, I think it's called. They're top of that league. So that's it. that says that they are doing some, a lot of good things. Um, we think they'll be um, competitive, obviously. Um, probably look to get, get after us and, and make things difficult for us. But and by all accounts, they've got some good players. Um, so haven't watched them yet, but that's obviously on my to-do list uh, along, with, along with some of the other staff. So uh, yeah, hugely excited by the game. Another great occasion. Another home draw, which is which is crazy, really. Um, keep getting home draws. So. Yeah, from a experience playing out there, the boys are used to it, which I think is nice. I mean, you can never quite replicate the nerves in the league games and, and in training. Um, but the more they experience the big games under the lights with people watching, then, then the better for their development. So, a uh, big game for us, and, and we'll be looking to obviously make the quarters um, like last season if we can. Just got while I've got you, ten, nearly ten years ago since you scored that famous goal at Burton and uh, winning winning promotion. Just tell us how you're enjoying your role as the under-18s manager. I love it. I, I couldn't be happier. Um, it's, it's, yeah, best job in the world, I feel. Um, <laughs> you haven't quite got the pressure of the results that, that come with first-team football um, and just helping and, and trying to work, work and develop young players is, is something I'm really enjoying. When I, 10 years ago when that goal went in, the last thing I thought of was probably coaching and what I'd be doing in, in 10 years' time. But obviously, the more you come towards the end of your career, you have to think. Um, and uh, yeah, it's such a fulfilling role. Obviously, it has its frustrations at times, um, like, like all jobs do, but couldn't be happier. And it's very different hours to being a player when I was in at 10 and home by one. It's obviously seven till seven most days. Um, and that's just a job. And that's, that's the environment that Eddie Howe's created um, from when he sort of took over as manager the staff just you, you follow his way which is you work 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 give it give every, absolutely everything to the club um, and every detail is important uh, as you, you guys know being around the first team as well so we just try and replicate that as best we can um, and give the players the best possible chance to to make a career and hopefully play in our first team or a first team elsewhere but personally you know, I, I love my job and um I love working at the, the club that's given me so much. Well, I'm sure we're all looking forward to seeing how you and your boys get on for the rest of the season. And of course, in that FA Youth Cup game against Mill. Alan, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Now then, our attention is going to turn to the first team and that game against Norwich tomorrow. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. Yeah, we reviewed everything that we did before Watford. Um, tried to see where we went wrong in the preparation for that game because it wasn't the performance that we wanted and tried to apply those things in the build-up to this game. We've got to find ways to improve and change our results, change our performances. Um, I'm absolutely confident we can do that. I've seen a good reaction from the players this week, very focused, very driven to help our 
ourselves out of the position that we're in and change the mood. So that's what we've got to do. Definitely there has to be a shift and an improvement in our attacking play, which is hard for us because it's been so unlike us in recent seasons. It's always been our strength, Every I think, near enough every season. We've always had our attacking play, our goal scoring, our, our style of play to, to fall back on. Um, and that's at times this season gone missing and I think that's a massive thing we need to rediscover very quickly. Uh, their style of play hasn't changed. I think full credit to, to Daniel and his team and his players for um, still trying to execute the way they got promotion from the championship. Uh, very expansive. Um, they've got some very good technical players. Uh, we know it'll be a difficult game. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking this morning. Neil, there's no doubt about it. It's a, a huge game at Carrow Road, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost like the, the boot being on the other foot, if you like. You know, um, we were the home team last last Sunday against Watford, and now Norwich are obviously the home team. You know, they're going to be um, they're going to be um, probably trying to get a carnival atmosphere, if you like, at Carrow Road. Um, there's six points behind us. It's it's, it's obviously another six points for, for for both teams. So um, everything to play for. And of course, Norwich they've come up into the Premier League. What have you made of them? You know, in the in the first half of the season. It's interesting. I was looking at their stats um, yesterday. You know, let's not forget they beat Manchester City at the start of the season at home. They won three two, and they beat Norwich as well. They won two of their first three home games in the Premier League. So they made a they made a fantastic start. And then all of a sudden, I think that you know the Premier League sort of hit home how hard it is to win in this league. We've seen it, you know, in every season that we've been in the Premier League, we, we've had runs where we found wins hard to come by, and obviously we're finding one of those now. Um, Norwich have got one win in 17 now, but they have drawn their last two home games. They've taken the lead a lot at home as well. Uh, it's a very partisan crowd there, so um, it's going to be a, a tough encounter for us. And if we look back to last week, obviously Norwich, a 4-0 defeat to Manchester United. And I was actually going to bring up that Manchester City result, you know, even when their backs are against the wall, they can pull out a result from nowhere. Yeah, um, let's not lose sight of the fact that they've had they've had some injuries as well. Um, their main main striker team of Pookies, obviously, was he missed the game at Old Trafford, and they had an 18 year old uh, youth player up front at Old Trafford. That's some baptism of fire for him. So that's probably one of those games that they can you know write off, chalk off. Uh, they may not have been expecting to get too much at Old Trafford, particularly um, with a depleted squad. So. Um, they might have players back against us, so like I said, it's going to be a, going to be a great test for both both sides. And as you say, Timu Puki missed that game last weekend. It remains to be seen whether he's going to be back for this weekend. But they've got other players, you know, that can cause threat threats. Max Ahrens has, you know, been catching the eye, and Todd Cantwell's popped up with the odd goal here and there too. Yeah, like I said, I mean, um, it's difficult to say they've been formidable at home, but they've certainly been a lot better at home than I think that their league position and perhaps their results suggest. Um, I spoke to one of their local reporters yesterday. It looks like Tima Pookie's back in training. Um, whether they kept him back last week or not, we'll never know, but um, I fully expect that he'll probably start against us. Like you said, Todd Campwell certainly been been catching the eye. I know a lot of people have got him in their FBL team and they've really Are you one of him. them? I'm afraid not. <laughs> So um, yeah, they've got they've got threats all over the pitch, and um, it's going to be a tough game. And in terms of our injury news, we obviously talked about Nathan Ake and Adam Smith being back in the team, but we've also had Lloyd Kelly back in training. And I mean, he's a bit of an unknown quantity to fans because he's not played for us just yet. But it'll be great to you know see him back involved if he is you know in the squad. Yeah, I mean, everybody says about you know when, when you when you welcome a player back from a long term injury, it's like having a new signing. Well, he is a, still a new signing, if you like, because. Like you say, we haven't seen too much of him. I think he played against Burton in the Carabao Cup and played in the Hampshire Senior Cup, scored a fantastic goal out here for those of us who were there that night. So, the, you know, the signs of, are really good of what we've seen so far of Lloyd. I know we haven't seen a great deal, but been so unlucky with injury, one injury and then an, another injury after that. So an absolutely fantastic addition to the certainly to the training squad and let's wait and see if he's an addition to the match day squad as well and just finally we haven't done it for a few weeks but what's your score prediction for the weekend I think it's going to be a 2-0 away win I'm very very confident um, I think we're going to go to Norwich um, it's going to be a really tough battle there but I think we can come away with the points well there we go a 2-0 away win if it happens you heard it here first if you are going up to Carroll Road then do have a safe journey but if not make sure you keep an eye on AFC BTV and BBC Radio Solent for the latest commentary bye for now